Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be going over some watercolor basics to get you started with learning how to paint with watercolors. I will have a link in the description below where you can see all of the supplies and paint colors I used for this painting. Let's get started. So the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to do one wet on dry and then we're going to do one wet on wet. So first we're going to do the wet on dry. We are just going to take our large 12 brush. We're going to load up that brush with water. And once it's nice and wet, you are going to go right into that blue paint mixture. And I'm just going to scooch this over so you can see. I'm going right into it, making a decent amount of water with the paint so it's very fluid, really filling up my brush. And then, with that, we are just going to go right onto our paper and just with easy brush strokes, we are just going to paint straight down the page. I did use washi tape to separate these two sections in my Windsor Newton journal. You don't have to do it, but it is nice to be able, especially with these practices, to use up only one page with two different paintings. It's just a good way to practice and not waste a lot of your paper. So at the very end there, I did go back into my paint and I added a little bit more to my brush just to get all the way down. But right now you're gonna see that this is a very even wash. It's the same color, it has the same gradient value, and that's what we want. Now, while this dries, we're gonna to go to our other side and you're just gonna to get to see the difference of working from wet on dry, so taking that wet paint and going right onto dry paper. And now with this side, we are first gonna take clean water and we are going to fill up this entire side. And then I'm gonna dab my brush off and I'm gonna go back into that blue paint that same mixture that we made from before. And I'm just going to start tapping this in. And we're gonna do the same thing. So it's kind of just letting this thing, letting the paint bloom into the areas. It just kind of works a lot more smoothly. You're gonna see that as I get to the bottom, I can get the paint from the top to the bottom, but I'm not having to go back into my paint. It is creating a very pretty gradient value where it's starting dark and it's going to a lighter value. And that is just, it's so beautiful. It just shows the magic of watercolor. And it's so much fun to see that. And that's just gonna look beautiful with our final painting. So you're just gonna get to see right here, see a little bubble, I'm just gonna blend that out. Um, you're just gonna get to see here these two different techniques of creating a nice flat wash. And then we're gonna let both of these dry and then we're gonna come in with our smaller brush and we're going to create those tapping motions to make some trees in our foreground. And that putting those two easy practices together are gonna to create two very pretty paintings that are really gonna make you feel like you can do this. All right, to finish off this painting, we are going to do a little bit of our color mixing practices and we are going to make this light blue that we use, we're gonna use the exact same color, but we're just gonna have such a dark value that it's gonna really pop out as our trees in the foreground. So I'm gonna take my size zero snap brush. I'm gonna fill it up with water. And already, because it's a smaller brush, it's just gonna have less water on it. I'm tapping some of it out just so it's not too, uh, so it doesn't have little drops in it. And then I'm gonna go right into my indigo paint right on top of that section I had dried. And then on a piece of paper towel, you can already see how dark that is. And I'm just going to tap and allow any excess to come off, but that's how dark we want it. And so you can always go back in and get a little more if you feel like you tap too much off. But then from there, we're just gonna start in the center. It doesn't, you don't have to be too precise with this. Thank you. 
As you see, as I'm coming down, I'm losing paint in my brush. So this tapping motion is kind of already getting a gradient. I'm going to go back into my paint. And that was a lot, so I'm going to go over my paper towel and just tap it off. And I'm just going to pick up from where I left off. I'm not going to fix where it kind of faded because it's just going to give a nice natural look. But all I'm doing is holding my brush at an angle and I'm just tapping in what I think the shape of the tree should be. It's just starting small at the top and getting wider as we come down. And just letting that wideness become pretty slow. I'm not going, I'm not getting too wide too fast. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over to the side. I'm gonna start a little bit lower and I'm gonna just start tapping again. I had refilled up my paint on my brush. And I'm just tapping in again. Again, I'm trying not to go too wide, too fast. It's okay if there are gaps. You want there to be some natural highlight areas. And again, just using the side motion on my brush. And there we have our second tree. Now we're gonna come over to the left side. And I'm just going to, so I'm not gonna be as high as our first, not as low as our second, but somewhere in the middle. And then I'm just gonna start tapping again. And this is just such great practice. If you are ever bored and want to paint but don't know what to paint, this is my go-to. Just painting in some simple trees. Nature is just beautiful because you can use whatever colors you want, the sky, just has so many colors when it comes to sunsets. So you can really just explore with your paints and just have a really fun time. Now we're gonna move on to our second side. So this is drying, this will not take long to dry at all. We are going to do the exact same practice and we're just gonna move on to this gradient value. Just to have a little bit of fun with this practice, I'm gonna take a lot of loose paint and I'm just gonna tap my brush over my painting just to add some fun splatter effects because I enjoy it and I think it adds a little something to a basic exercise. I love to do that with a lot of my paintings just to spice it up at the very end. And there you have your first beginner project. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I would love to hear in the comments about what you'd like to see next on this channel and if you found this video helpful. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.